Alright, so welcome everybody. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I approach my portrait drawings with uh, charcoal. So, let me just take you to it. So, as you can see, I've already started up uh, doing the drawing a little bit. You can see I've blocked in a little bit of my shapes and stuff that I, uh, I use as a sort of scaffolding. I'm going to talk you through that, but just to give you an explanation, I tried to do this video last night. It was so hot in the studio, I couldn't keep all the doors and windows shut. I had to keep them shut because the, the pub down the road was going off and it was making so much noise. But um, that's a little explanation. It was so hot last night, I tried to do this video. I gave up. I was like, nah, it's too hot, I'll do it in the morning. Here we are now. Let me walk you through it. All right, so just to walk you through what it is that I've gone through already, um, I've blocked in the uh, main head, the, uh, the neck, a little bit of the traps, um, and a little bit of the hair. I'll talk to you about how I approach it. Here you can see I've got my reference photo that we're going to be working from today. It's a uh, John, it's John Singer Sargent uh, portrait. Um, I can't remember who of. I'll find that out. It'll be in the title anyways. <laughs> Alright, so let's start off where I start off with pretty much all of my drawings. I start off with thinking about how big is my piece of paper. Because the piece of paper is going to dictate, you know, the scale in which I construct the drawing. So. I look at the model, I look at the reference photo, I think about, okay, where does that look best on this piece of paper? How can I make this composition sit nicely? Um, either she's in a nice relaxed pose, or the model's in a nice relaxed pose, or the reference photo is a nice relaxed pose, or in a bit more stark, bit more uh, movement-based pose, stuff like that. All of these things are going to dictate the way in which I construct the drawing, and the way in which I place it on the piece of paper. So. Your piece of paper and the size of it really matters. You don't want to have a piece of paper that's this big and you draw this big. You know, if you're going to draw that big, might as well go get a piece of paper which is like half this size. It's going to fit that drawing like that. You know, I love a piece of paper this size because I can use the full uh, motion of my shoulder muscle and get these nice uh, controlled marks making sort of uh, It's a lot more controlled when I use my shoulder than it is when I'm in like here making chicken scratches. Having said all that, the piece of paper matters and the size of it matters. The first thing I always do is I think about where I'm going to place the end of the top of the head. And so I think about it, in this case we're studying a drawing, uh, the you know the composition's made out for us already, the sit is made out for us already. I just love studying sergeant's drawings and I think they are really really helpful things to study and uh, draw from in yourself so that you can improve your own drawings. So that being said, composition's already made it out for us. I try and like make it as close to that as possible. But if I have a sitter there, same thing applies. I think about the composition, think about, okay, that's where I want the head to end. So that's the first thing I do. Second thing I do is I think about where I want the chin to end and where I want the entirety of the head to come down to. So I make a mark for that. I think about that, does it match up with the model, the reference? Yep, I do that. Then I think about the size of her neck, I think about the width, her lats, you know, all these come into play. I really think about, you know, especially because she's a woman, uh, women tend to have much uh, petite, much more petite type of necks, much more skinnier type of necks, uh, whereas men, their necks sort of sit flush with, with their uh, skull, with their skull, it sort of sits flush with it. Women, it's sort of, it's, it's a bit more skinnier, a bit more uh, elegant, um, and it's just, you know, a lot more feminine. And so the way that a woman's neck sits a lot more differently than a man's neck. And that's important to remember that because we're, we're drawing a woman here. If I block her neck out a bit, like say I bring it past her nose here, bring it here, say I make a mark here, she's got a really thick neck and it makes her look a lot more masculine. And, you know, especially if we're, we're uh, doing a commission and, and we're, uh, we're drawing for, uh, you know, a commission and, and we've got the model there, well, not the model, the uh, commissioner there, the lady, say, and we draw her with a really thick and strong masculine neck. She's not going to like that. <laughs> you know, nine times out of ten, they're not going to like that. Um, so really, 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 really think about the size in proportion to the head of the neck. If you're drawing a woman... Uh, the neck, remember, key thing, neck is always smaller. If you join a man, neck's usually a lot more uh, flush with the, with the skull, you know, and the, uh, 
and the uh, traps are a lot more defined. They don't sink as much. They're a bit more up, a bit more rigid. You know, a lot more things that go into throwing a man versus a woman. But uh, those are just some things I want you to think about since we're studying a woman today. All right, so next thing I think about is, um, you know, I've got those two marks, right? I've got two marks. And then I've got the width of the neck, right? I've got the width of the head is what I think about as well. I sort of block in that sort of width of the head. You know, it's not going to finish where my top of the head's going to finish. Remember that. Because the hair rises, it sits on top of the skull, so that the skull sort of sits, you know, like this. It sort of sits maybe like that. You know, skulls like this here, the hair sits above the skull, sits on it, but above it, just not, you know, depends how the hairstyle is. That's where it, the finishing line is going to go. I think about where the top of her forehead starts compared to the head. You can see the reference photo. There's a drop. You can see that the hair sits above. We can see the top of her scalp, just in this sort of area here. Then the skull proceeds backwards and then the hair sits on top of that there. So the next thing I think about is where that forehead comes in. And then I want to think about where my eye line is. And so, you know, she's looking, you know, she's kind of looking a little bit, she's looking a bit more down. I'd say, I'd say she's looking a bit more down. Because the simple fact is, you can see that there's a bit, there's a bit more forehead than there is chin. So what that tells us, if I can bring this here and you can have a look. Okay, so when, when you can tell, a good key marker, I'll take the hat off so you can see easier. When somebody is looking like front on, right at you, you know, the forehead is pretty even with the chin, pretty even, you know, pretty even across the board, right? And then the ears, the ears, if you can see that, bring it closer. The ears sit, you know, nice and flush with the nose. You can see that my ear lobes sit. <laughs> There we go, sit a bit flush with the bottom of the nose there. The brow, the brow sits with the top of the top of the ears there. These anchor points and these anchor points here, all really great anchor points for you to keep in mind when you're looking at the reference and then when we're checking back here. You know, does her nose sit lower than her earlobe or higher than her earlobe, right? It sits lower in the reference we so what that tells us is that she's not flush straight on right if her nose is sitting lower we can tell that she's a bit more tilted towards us she's a bit more looking down what that means is like the the uh, earlobe raises up the, the nose lowers down as well as that is the uh, the jaw here gets less we can see less of the jaw we can see more of the forehead so those are some key landmarks that we can look at straight away. We look at our drawing, we think, and then we can look at the model and we can look at, okay, is the, is my drawing, is the nose higher than the ears or is it lower than the ears? Does that match with the model? Is she looking down? Is she, you get the gist, you get the gist. All right, back to the drawing. All right, so I've turned on the lights here so you can see a little bit better. Um, all right, so back to it. Thinking about, I've made the brow line i put that in now i think about the nose anchor points there's going to be the ear point here she's looking a bit more down so what does that mean the ear is higher than the nose is and we can see that on the on the reference photo and we can see it on the model if we got a model here and there's a little bit more forehead than there is a chin you know a little bit more don't over exaggerate it to the point that there's no chin at all but you, you get the gist and you can see in the reference or, or you can see in the model, you know, compare, 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 see if points line up and stuff like that. What we can do as well is we can see, we can see if I bring you here, if I hold up the angle and I match the, the bottom of the ear to the, the bottom of the nose, gives us that sort of an angle. Bring it over here. Does that angle sit flush with the bottom of the ear and the nose? Yes, it does. That's the angle that we want. All right, go into the ear to the top of the brow there. Does that angle sit well with the ear to the top of the brow? It does sit well. You know, angles can really help us in finding these proportions. I'll line up here. 
with the top of her hair there, or with the bottom of the hair, I suppose. Let's see what the angle looks like there. How's that angle if I transition it over here? Yep, there's that angle there. So those are some things that I, you know, that can really help is like make a point of reference, say like I did the bottom of the ear there, line it up with other points, you know, the brow, the nose, the lips, the chin, and does that, do those angles, when you measure them here, do they f match up with the drawing here, you know, if I was to use that, or say, say, is the lip here like this, and my angle is like that, we know that that angle here is out, and we need to make it a bit more like that angle. And that's really going to help with the proportions and stuff like that. Um, I did this last night, but and I'll do it again, just so you can get a sense of it. What I do, first off, you know, we get the brow line here, so make some marks for the brow. Then I'm going to think about is um, the shadows for the eyes and mapping out that sort of a, uh, that sort of a shape for the eyes, right? Because because everything's just, you don't want to get too like, like down here as if we're doing some sort of technical drawing, right? Or as if we were writing. Hold the pencil back here and make the movements with your shoulder and make your shoulder the point of anchor. So that way you get some more definite, some easier movements, you know, a lot more control comes from your shoulder than it does from, you know, the wrist and stuff of that nature. Another quick thing I just wanted to express was how important it is to, you know, not only be here measuring and making sure that your drawing is working out, but also to step back, you know, at least a good, like, if you can, seven feet is, is preferable um, from your drawing. Just allows you to see everything as a whole, really. You're, you're much more able to see everything as one singular sort of shape, really, and see how it's coming along all together and compare that to your model or reference photo a lot easier. So, you know, as you're drawing, be here, be here, and as, as far back as you can be. Um, usually I can I set up the drawing to be there and I can walk out the door here and <laughs> look at it from that part. But yeah, I just thought that was a quick tip just to remind you of that fact. Alright, so it's starting to get along uh, how I'm kind of liking it to look. Um, I've sort of, you know, just really, really finely, really, really loosely, just using the sort of long side of my pencil. I've started to build up shape, build up form with the flat side of my pencil really lightly all across the drawing. Alright, so what's so great about doing it uh, so lightly is that not only do, does it give us a lot more control, over the marks we're making and a lot more control over the values we're creating and the, and the shapes we're creating too. But also it allows us to, a couple of things, allows us to also, you know, rework it. Like I can just lightly take off the charcoal so easily because I haven't punched it heaps hard into the paper. You know, that's so great, <laughs> especially when I know that I want to change things constantly. Another great thing is that when it comes time to really put in my darker lines and flesh out my line work so that it, it, it creates this nice motion to the drawing, I can do that really easily. And those blacks are going to really punch when I, because I've been lightly shading up to them. And when I put down those, I've got a really strong black mark rather than that black mark just disappearing into the blackness if I was to punch all this all this in really, really hard. So that's really great is to just lightly punch up the values as light as you can, like with your pencil work, just on, on the side and slowly build up to it, you know? 
Nothing worse than really punching in, really punching in the dark, really punching in the black, and realizing it's incorrect. But and you really, really struggle to get it off the paper because you've really punched it into the paper. There's nothing worse than that in a drawing. Um, so work it slow, work it soft, and it'll all come together nice and evenly. Anyways, I'm going to work this some more. I'm going to work up to a more darker, a more refined shading. I'm going to maybe, I'm probably going to put in the background. It's just, you know, I'm going to grab some, um, um, some, uh, what's that called? Some willow charcoal stick, right? And just put in a nice, even stroked background around the sitter. Because uh, later on I can fix up areas of it later on. But just so I've got that nice dark value that I can work up towards and then, you know, flesh out the values a bit more, having that dark behind it so that I can tell what's actually dark and what's really dark, being that the background will be really dark. So let me show you how I do that. You know, I just want to, this is a bit of um, willow charcoal stick that I've been using for a minute. It's a... Uh, it's got a nice flat edge to it. Makes it nice that um, I've got that, so that I can just pull down on that flat edge and make these nice lines. Sometimes I like to have a sort of a base where I want to bring that to. You know, just about there-ish. I think is nice because if you see the reference, he hasn't gone the entire paper. He's done it sort of nicely like that. I want to I want to follow that too because I, I like that that approach too you know just keeping it sort of this nice framing of the work with the background it's not it's not um, it's not like a filling type of effect it's not like trying to fill the background it's just this framing that complements the drawing your background is only there to complement the drawing. It's not there to do, you know, fancy shit with, unless, you know, the focus is the background, when in that case, it's, you know, a scene painting, you know. If you've got a sitter and you've got a portrait, your focus is the sitter. It is the portrait. Anything that isn't the face is only there to complement the face. It is only there to complement and draw our eyes to the main focus. The only reason you put something in is that it helps bring, you know, a more sense of maybe her clothes, more sense of what she's wearing, her hairstyle. Everything is only there to, to bring us into focus on the portrait, on the sitter's face, on what matters in this composition. Because the, the whole point of doing portraiture is that a viewer comes in and looks at the work and what we want them to look at first and foremost is the face and the expression on the face. Everything else is only there to compliment, you know? So when I'm putting this background, it's not just to take up some space, it's here to compliment. And it's only here to compliment. <laughs> nice about putting in the background is that we can start to sculpt the the sitter we can start to sculpt the overall shape with the background you know especially like the hair things of that nature we're not entirely happy with it we can sculpt that into happiness <laughs> I really want to keep this downward motion um, not only because Sargent's also done that but because it, it gives this nice, you know, flow to, to the drawing. The flow for the drawing here, say, this is a, a drawing I did with Avalon, my fiance, uh, in person. 
I've, I've, you can see I've done the background downwards, but I've come in with the eraser because she is sitting a bit vertical. The energy is kind of like this. She's not looking at you. I, I like that verticality and putting in the background downwards allows it us to switch it up and maybe add some verticality to it later on, maybe darken it in different ways. But just this downwards, you know, sort of sits the pose really nicely, you know, and, and build this up as slowly as you did with everything else on the drawing, you know, there's no sense rushing this and then going over something you didn't want to go over and then being pissed off that you went over it because you just didn't want to take your time. And I'm, I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> I've done that too many times. Another great thing to have on hand is one of these sort of two inch uh, soft hog hair type of brushes. Like real, they feel really nice and soft in hand. What's so great about these is that, you know, with charcoal and with our hands, you, you, you might've seen people like try and smudge things with their fingers. Don't do that shit. <laughs> what happens is we start to put the oils from our hands into the charcoal itself and, and, and and what with that oil, it sort of reacts with the charcoal and the paper and sort of makes it sort of wet and goes into the paper and you can't really change it and move it around as nicely as you would if you just use something like this or if you use something like a uh, paper stump to move things around. I generally, you know, don't much use those too much. Um, no, at least not often. What I like to do with this background is I like to just soften up little areas of it so that I can come back in in a, in a second and add some different sort of movements to it. Like, I didn't like that, so I'll just take that off because I still want that to be relatively white but you can see how that overall affects the, the the way that the charcoal is sitting you know it makes it nice and softer I can do pull these edges back a bit more pull them out and uh, essentially just allowing me greater control when I am um, going to come back in. So I'm pretty happy with the way that the hair is turning out. Um, I think you can see I've started to do some more solid black lines through the portrait. I'm going to start to move into the face now. You can see I've already started to, to sort of get a bit more aggressive with, with my shading and stuff like that with, throughout the face. Anyways, I'm going to get into that now and we'll work through that.
while I do this, it's also nice to have a paper towel on hand, just because you can get a little bit more accurate, just smudge back those little edges you want a bit softer, etc, etc. Like through here and there and there and here. I just want those areas a little bit more softer so I can build them up again and uh, rework them. It's uh, actually really hard to get these uh, these eyes the way I want them to look, um, particularly just because, you know, I'm thinking about... <laughs> where I'm putting them, where everything else is going. And all these little fine details, sort of shading. That's, that's that goes on top of them. So just gonna remember to take my time. You know, check, check, correct, check, check, all that good stuff, and um, eventually it'll uh, it'll come into place rather nicely. At least that is the plan. I'm going to remember to line these eyes both up with each other. Yeah, I'll uh, check back in once I've worked these out. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to call the drawing there. Um, let's go over what I've done since last time I flicked off the camera. I'll show you and walk you through the things that I've done. But um, I'm not entirely happy with this drawing. Um, you know, I mean, honestly though, I, I'm, I'm not. There's a lot of things in this drawing which I, I feel like uh, need vast improvement, such as the eyes, the chin, the mouth, a lot of things. Um, I'm kind of happy with the hair, the hair is nice. Um, it's, it's an alright drawing, so I'm kind of happy with it. But let me show you what I've done since uh, before I switched off the camera. Let me walk you through what I've... Um, 
what I've done here. I've really defined these sort of these line qualities here and then disappeared them here and there, let them disappear here and there, especially around the face there, it's disappeared, and then strengthen them up through there. This all helps with the flow and the and the telling of the um, drawing. And you can see that I've not only just like scribbled out there's there's intentional and deliberate black dots and marks through the drawing that are uh, really help to sort of tell what it is I want to tell about this portrait now obviously it looks quite different from the original drawing um, that just happens that's John Singer Sargent drawing that and this is Zach Hampson in 2019 drawing uh, a copy of it <laughs> is bound to look completely different. All right, so the takeaways for this drawing, start slow, work up, build up, and uh, you know, the slower you work, the slower you build up those tones, really work them, makes these black marks, these black punches really more punchy, your line quality a lot more punchy, uh, everything a lot more dynamic, and you have a lot more control over your drawing in that respect. Um, I think that's the major takeaway for this process. If you have any sort of questions about the way I did things or whatever, uh, leave them in the comments below. Other than that, if you haven't hit subscribe, hit subscribe. Once you hit subscribe, hit that bell. Uh, hit this, hit that like button below this video. And But yeah, to reiterate, most importantly, leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you thought. If you have any sort of questions, I'd love to answer them. Um, if you thought this video could be better in some ways, if you thought I've left out things and included some things, Anything, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to read it. Anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video. See ya.